So to take the handle cover off, you have to gently prise off the top cover like that. I'm not going to move because I'm just holding it and doing it one-handed at the moment. Uh, it's got a couple of cables going to it. it only needs uh, two wires for the light. And uh, there seem to be three other wires going to it, which is for the NFC reader circuit. So it's just getting the bottom off first before you then start on the top off. So that's the cover removed. Uh, this time it's taken off a little bit of the plastic. So I have to be careful of that. The rest of the clips is still in place. Maybe a little blob of glue to replace that. If you're changing the light covers, of course you just prise that off. Probably need a little knife to get in there. Uh, there are people on eBay selling UV resistant light covers. I uh, can't do the fingernail, so I have to get in with a knife. So the light cover bit is just held in with little protruding bits of plastic that you can see on the edge there. And once you get in with something narrow, you can then start to unhook it. And uh, this old piece is loose, just attached by the wires internally. If you did take it all apart, then of course you could slacken off the wires and uh, probably remove this completely. So with a bit of levering, that will eventually separate. Probably a good idea to keep your fingers away from these surfaces. Ah, now here, this bit is looking like an antenna for the NFC reader. On the other side are the chips for the LED drivers or just resistors. So somewhere in this bit is the NFC reader. So the next job is to try and lever away this reflective part because it's actually stuck onto the plastic. Um, so a small screwdriver or then preferably ending up with a plastic um, trim separating tool which is a little bit big to start off with. But I uh, just had that back a minute ago. Behind it you can see uh, another circuit board which is the NFC uh, circuit board. And you can tell it is, because when I hold my uh, Apple Watch up to it, see it goes into um, paying credit card mode automatically. So obviously the aerial is transmitting something that the watch is picking up. I wonder what was uh, beeping on my watch for a while, but that's what it is. So some part of it is working, uh, but still the fob is not talking to the car, unfortunately. So there you can see the NFC circuit board, and you can probably hear I watch dinging away as it's trying to communicate to it. It's a shame that uh, they never got to develop the software to use an Apple Watch to open the car. That would be uh, absolutely ideal. So, um, yeah, a little bit tricky. Obviously, there's chips down there as well, so you have to be a bit careful, um, especially with a screwdriver. This is why a flatter, broader trim separating tool is going to be better. And I'm going to put the phone down and try and leave this away from the glue by moving it along and that is it leave it away with there the flexible circuit board underneath for the nfc there's another circuit board in there with the cables going to it we've got red and black which i would guess the power probably does the leds and the nfc power and then you've got two greens and a black uh, at least one of which is going to be a data communication wire for the nfc this is actually really difficult to uh, video because as soon as I break my iPhone that I'm using for video recording close to the device, it wants to do a credit card payment because it sees the NFC reader. Shame they, as I say, didn't set up the phone or an Apple Watch to work in the car. But I think it looks like we've got to do now is lever out of that bung where my finger is. Just got a little screwdriver, pull it forwards a little bit. So at the end of this circuit board, seems to be a little plug-in connector and I'm hoping by pulling out this there's enough slack to unplug that connector. So then you can pull out the wire and the bun, the circuit board comes with it. So right at the end of the connector there is a little piece of plastic that you've got to push in, sort of like that, do the same on the other side, then that connector should disconnect from the circuit board like so and now that my NFC is being disconnected I can get as close as I want to with my phone without it going into payment mode and then 
all of that circuit board should hopefully lift out. There we go. And let's see now if we can see why that is not working fully. By checking if that's got any water damage, stick that under the microscope as well. Can't see, it's very small. Let's go and have a look. There is, however, I can see, and you can see in there, some white markings which is indicative of a bit of water getting in there. Uh, everywhere really could do with sealant. And if you reassemble it, I would recommend doing that. And although that Loctite 574 is a bit messy and hard to get hold of, it's quite a nice sealant because it only actually goes off when the surfaces are pressed together, i.e. when air is excluded. So you can assemble everything, wipe off lots of excess and it just sets where you want it to set. Probably difficult to get it apart afterwards, but as long as it keeps working, keeps the water out, that's uh, good for now. So now we've opened up, you can see along the bottom edge of that circuit board, all that marking there, which is water contamination damage. And it may have shorted between some of those resistors, certainly discolored around there and certainly on the top is all that white electrolytic contamination cross shorting uh, has affected those components probably and certainly water's got in um, so need to clean it up I'm gonna get my meths out I think I will squirt it with uh, an oil even though I didn't on the other circuit board I said I was going to squirt it with WG40 ended up just squirting it with varnish um, I think this time I, this is definitely um, something that's causing the circuit not to fully operate. So I want to try and expel as much water as possible. And really it's either one or the other. You either spray it with oil and then you can't really varnish it afterwards. Unless you put a lot of work in uh, degreasing, I suppose you could. But what I'm going to hope is the oil not only dispels, uh, ejects any remaining water after I put the ethanol on it but uh, remains on there to continue repelling any water that might get in and then I'm going to try and waterproof the enclosure so the water doesn't get in again. So if you've never seen uh, how to repair water damage on parts this is how you do it and uh, I've used this technique on three personal remote control key fobs of cars where the key fob has been, uh, in my case, went through a full wash cycle on a washing machine and uh, obviously didn't work afterwards. And uh, using this method of basically cleaning off all the electrolyte stuff, which is probably something like tin oxide or something, lead oxide maybe if there is such a thing, that uh, comes out of the solder Actually, I'm thinking maybe there isn't lead anymore because they don't use that in solder. So, yeah, maybe tin comes out of the solder. And tin oxide is actually a conductor because that's what they use on LCD screens and even heated windscreens now, I think, by the looks of things. Um, and, of course, that if it's a conductor, that will short across lots of different pins. Let me just wipe that. So there's sort of a grey material coming off there which is probably the electrolyte let's give it a blow as well oh all over my face lovely i think which side was it yeah it was these components here that were marked possibly shorted out so let's give them a good rubbing all around there in between the chip legs so in particular there was a little bit of crud between those two black boxes on the right hand side of the picture. One's a transistor and one's either a resistor or a capacitor or a diode or something. You can see that little bit of powder that I've broken away from in between the two components. I'm pretty sure that was shortened out and used the smallest sort of micro little screwdriver that I could find. That one there to do that. And uh, if you want some precision screwdrivers that might include something like that, have a look at the video description for buying links. Uh, I'll have a look on Amazon, which about the same thing. So, yeah, look carefully for that sort of uh, occurrence and get rid of it. All right, I sprayed it in uh, sufficient 
maintenance oil or WD-40 type oil, something that's going to expel water. Hopefully that says it expels water on there somewhere. Yeah, there you go. Dispels moisture, something like that, i.e. oil based. Lots around that connector. I uh, also got my little screwdriver into the end of the connector, scratched a little bit in between the contacts, there you can see it, and sprayed in with the oil as well. Uh, I've left it all quite oily so that it um, keeps any moisture at bay, hopefully. It's not going to last forever because it's a very thin oil, but I'm going to try and seal the case stock water getting in to uh, make that last longer. Um, of course, if you get oil on the back of this, it's going to affect how well it sticks back on the handle. I don't think that really matters too much, though, to be honest, because it's all clamped in place with the outer shell. So my suspicion was that the problem was the short between those two components by my thumb there, because it was uh, looked to be fairly obviously uh, bridged or connected and conducting to some extent. That would be my suspicion. If you have a go at yours, uh, you might want to just do that one if that's the problem. But uh, since it's all apart, no harm in uh, cleaning everything else up. Now let's get it back in the car, back in the handle, and see if it makes any difference to the NFC operation, hoping that it doesn't need repairing or anything. And just before we plug in, I'm gonna squirt a bit of oil in this uh, connector as well, in case there's some corrosion and shorting going on. Try not to get it everywhere, because that's gonna uh, affect how well I can seal it afterwards. So after noticing a lot of corrosion on the board around the test points, scraped a lot of the paint, painty sort of varnish stuff out of the way. I can see a lot of the tracks had corroded and disconnected. So I think this is where the wires go. It's my best guess. It's very hard to uh, see once you've taken away all the corrosion and off the track. But I think that top transistor connects directly to some of the inside pins right next to where the transistors connected. And I think that's where those tracks went down to those two little dot through plate connections where the end of my thumb is. So I'm not sure it's gonna work. I'm not sure I've got the right connections, but we'll give it a go anyhow. So I've just temporarily plugged it in on the surface to see if it works. Uh, if it doesn't, I'm going to have to re-varnish those scraped off connections. And to my absolute amazement, with the key, it actually works. I am surprised. I'm surprised I managed to do it. But that's good. That saved uh, quite a few hundred quid. That is working. Nice one. So all I've got to do now is, uh, this time I'm going to varnish it up, reassemble, job done. So there again is the fix. Looks a bit of a mess to be honest, but there was a lot of corrosion, as I say, around those uh, gold coloured spots. Because obviously they're exposed for testing reasons, but uh, the water got in and electrolyzed everything around it, including the proper tracks. And uh, when I was scratching away at the tracks, I think it actually went through to the next layer of the circuit board, so that's why it got a bit confusing. But um, yeah, so there's two wires come from either side of the right hand side of that transistor. The transistor is the little black box on the left with three pins. And the connections go onto two of those test points, which are two of those like uh, gold circles, like the ones on the right there, but where the wires end up. So I wouldn't suggest trying it yourself because it is very, very difficult. You have to have a very fine wire and a very fine soldering iron and a lot of patience. But by all means, if you want to have a go, and uh, it is nice after a lot of strenuous effort to get things working. Very satisfying doing DIY sometimes. Um, so as I say, if you do have a go, I hope this helps. Rather than spray it on, I'm going to use a little fine paintbrush to dab on some varnish. This is varnish I'm going to use. Insulating varnish, especially for circuit boards from NG Chemicals. And the reason I'm going to brush it on this time is because I don't want to get the varnish inside that connector and stop it connecting properly. And the next issue is that plastic slot that the circuit board goes into is a bit too high and knocks into my solder point connections. So I'm going to have to squash the two circuit boards a bit closer together 
so it can go into the inside of that plastic slot. So, not in the original slot, but there is room to do that. Just got to get the connector wiggled around now. Then don't forget to push that rubber bung in, back in where it was previously. Then put the light cover back in place. And note it only goes on one way around. It's slightly more curved on one end than the other. And make sure the clip's going tight. Keep checking that it's working as well. Make sure nothing's come apart. And next, before putting on the top cover, I want to make sure water doesn't get in again. Um, so I think I saw a gasket underneath this cover, but obviously a little bit of water was getting through the gap. So I want to seal on top of that, which will get sealed between the top cover and this light cover. And I'll also seal around the edge, I think, as well. So I was thinking about Loctite 574, which I quite like. It does set quite hard, but it only sets in the absence of oxygen. So it's quite workable up until that point, which is nice. Uh, or just some clear silicon. So either would do, but I think I'm going to go for the Loctite, which is very uh, workable and fairly runny nature. And uh, yeah, hopefully it won't show up anywhere. Like so. Cover back on, and now hopefully the job's finished. Let's see. Yep, all good, all working well. So nice to uh, have a backup way of getting in the car. Managed to program the um, NFC card, see the other video part one for that. And uh, yeah, a tricky job, not something I'd recommend for the novice DIY wire, but it just shows it is possible with a bit of perseverance and persistence. Okay, thanks for watching. Good luck with yours. And no, I'm not gonna do it if you ask me to do one because it's a bloody difficult job. Cheers, bye.